Kia ora koutou katsua, no mai haramai ki UFC on Sky, Koravinda, Hunia, Aho. This week we are celebrating International Women's Day and acknowledging fighters both current day and those who have paved the way. So here is an in-depth look at the women who have helped shape the UFC. In 2023, the UFC celebrates its decorated 30-year history. A legacy of changing the sports landscape. It is all over! Proving the doubters wrong. Oh, no way! And bringing mixed martial arts to a mainstream level that was once considered unimaginable. Wow, he didn't come here to take part. He came here to take over. It's in that spirit of the pursuit of excellence that the UFC also welcomes another milestone. A decade of showcasing the women warriors of MMA on the sport's biggest stage. Oh! Huge head kick for Nunes! Ten years of women showing the world who they are, where they came from, and exactly what they are capable of. That is it! There is a new show, a queen, the Rose! A decade of breaking barriers, silencing the naysayers, and treating fans to some of the most iconic personalities, performances, and moments the sport has ever seen. Arguably the greatest fight in women's mixed martial arts history. Kong Magnum Wiley. While the UFC enjoyed a boom in popularity in the early 2000s, women's MMA had yet to garner the respect and recognition it deserved. Female athletes plied their trade in promotions like Strike Force, Elite XC, and Hook and Shoot. And another one buckles under the canvas. But one arena long remained off limits the UFC Octagon, combat sports' ultimate proving ground. When are we going to see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. Never? Never. <laughs> that all changed in 2011 with a former Olympian who became a lightning rod for the sport. It's one of the most accomplished female athletes to enter mixed martial arts, two-time Olympian Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey commanded the world's attention with elite skills, a polarizing personality, and irrefutable star power. I'm the champ now. The champ doesn't go to you. You come to the champ. So much so, a previously reluctant Dana White could no longer deny the merit in women's MMA. Bring the champ out here. Oh, no! yeah! I'm going to make it official right now. The first ever UFC women's champion, Ronda Rousey. <laughs> and I'm presenting her with her belt. In 2013, the global leader in combat sports opened its doors to athletes who would then change the course of history. Joe, this entire crowd is on their feet for the arrival of the first ever UFC women's bantamweight champion, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. This is a gigantic cultural moment, Mike. This is gonna open the door to so many young women that never thought about doing this as a career. She's changing sports. She's changing culture. And here we go. White trunks for Carmouche, black trunks for Rousey. Looking to close the distance early. And Ronda wants to get the clinch, and she's got the clinch now. She's got one underhook. More pressure. She's Ronda looking for it. it. She got Texas. it. Yeah, yeah. It's all over. Ronda. Ronda Rousey wasn't just a success, but a superstar, reaching a level of fame and notoriety never before seen in the sport. Do you know how many women are changing the way they look at athletics because of this woman? She's a female hero. And in turn, she opened the door that introduced sports fans to a wealth of talent that would finally be entering the world stage. In 2014, the first all-women season of The Ultimate Fighter ushered in the Strawweights, a fresh look at television's longest-running sports reality show that would go on to produce household names and future champions. This is the inaugural UFC Strawweight Championship. Sparza trying to break the will of Nama Yunus here. She's Here's tapping. the tip. Carla Esparza! 
Garza is the UFC strawweight champion of the world. As the roster of female champions grew, so too did the popularity of women's MMA. UFC set attendance records when it brought a blockbuster event to Australia, headlined by an all-female cast, proving that without question, women can lead the charge for mixed martial arts around the world. And we have, Joe, today, a record-setting crowd. She's hurt. Brown is in trouble. She's hurt. Head oh. kick. Holly looking to finish. She's out. Holly Hall is the new UFC Bantamweight Champion of the World. The UFC's international appeal is represented throughout the women's divisions with contenders and champions emerging from every corner of the globe. For a truly worldly ambassador, look no further than flyweight champion Valentina Shevchenko. Born in Kyrgyzstan and having lived in Peru for years, the trilingual star holds the most wins in flyweight history and the most title defenses among female champs in a single weight class. Oh, head kick, it's in. Oh, my God. Valentina Bullock Shevchenko. Women's MMA made the proving ground of the octagon a true melting pot. Liz Carmouche, the first woman to fight in the octagon, was openly gay and a military veteran. Mothers held their own against collegiate athletes. Fighters consistently broke through from previously underrepresented communities. Regardless of race, nation, or creed, the women of the UFC are beloved, respected, and embraced by audiences worldwide. The queens of their division revealed themselves to be as dominant and intense as their male counterparts. And again, and again, and again, and still. All while simultaneously blending elite athletic technique with raw human emotion. Before the fight started, you were saying to yourself, I'm the best, I'm the best. I am the best. <laughs> As championship reigns came and went, Amanda Nunes won up to them all by owning two divisions at once. After cleaning out the 135ers, the Lioness dared to be great. She eyed a second title against the ferocious and favored featherweight champion, Chris Cyborg. Cyborg's hurt! Champ champ status obtained. Oh! oh! Amanda Nunes! Oh! Oh! Chris Cyborg out cold! There's magic moments in MMA, and this is one of the things that makes the sport so beautiful. Ten years in, it's business as usual to see women under the bright lights of the octagon. Not to mention in the UFC Hall of Fame, on the broadcasts, and behind the scenes. So add one more adage to the unofficial unified rules. Right underneath, expect the unexpected? Never say never. And joining me now, who was behind helping to put that story together and the voiceover is UFC broadcaster Megan O'Levy. Megan, welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure when I get to see you, whether it's virtually or in real life. <laughs> I know, right? It's been so good. We've been able to catch up a couple times now. Look, I even sent you a message on the weekend during the UFC 285 broadcast because it was such an amazing story that went to air. We've just showed it to our viewers about women within the UFC and the impact that they've made on the organization. Tell us about putting a story like that together. It was definitely a long uh, process because... In 10 years, there have been so many incredible moments and you feel like no matter what you highlight that you are doing a disservice to other things because you're missing, um, you know, those monumental events or athletes. But we try to really best um, throughout the, the pictures and the words to really um, pay, pay homage to the incredible women who have stepped foot inside the octagon and those who really paved the way for them to be there as well. And so it was a team effort. Um, I have a colleague named Laura Gilbert that is just an incredible writer. So she really took the lead. I, you know, helped out here and there where I could with the writing. And then the voiceover was pretty intense. But I think it 
it came out to be a really beautiful piece. And I just hope we did some of those women, uh, you know, a good service with, with what we were able to put together. Yeah, absolutely. It was also a great reminder that there have been so many key moments for our women within the UFC. Were there any moments, you know, during your voiceover or looking through that vision that stood out for you? Yeah, well, you know what? I really liked um, going back to some of the old footage and seeing like Strike Force and Hook and Shoot and, you know, these different organizations where they did have women fighting first. And then when we look at the UFC highlights, it's fun to see Joanna as an up and comer, mm. not, you know, this dominant champion that we think of her now. Um, and so there were some really fun things to come across. And, and like I said, for us, it was kind of like, how do we put all of this into one little piece? I mean, it's yeah. 10 years of essentially groundbreaking history and how do we consolidate it? But um, it was a really fun process and uh, definitely one that I had a lot of love. Look, there was a time there, you know, when the UFC was in its infancy, really, where there were questions around, you know, when will women enter the UFC, if at all? Then, like as the story portrayed, Q Ronda Rousey and the rest was kind of history for the women's bantamweight division. It was actually really nice to remember that history. She's not a part of it anymore, but she's such an integral part. Oh, my God. And I mean, she set the table for every woman that will ever step foot inside the octagon. I mean... Without Ronda Rousey, I don't know if we would be there yet. I don't know if we would have ever gotten there. If maybe there would be a, just like a, a different organization for women in general. But she was such a pioneer and she always did it with other women in mind. And yes, she personally got a lot out of it, but she would always say like, I want to do this for other little girls and other women who are training just as hard as me and don't have the opportunity. And I think that always stuck with me. I mean, she gave me incredible opportunities throughout my career to work with her and interview her and have exclusives. And I don't think that I would necessarily be where I am without Rhonda. And so, you know, she's at the table for so many people. And I think sometimes because we're so far removed from the Rhonda era, we forget that. But I mean, she was the integral, vital key piece to it all. And talk to a bit about it on your personal journey. I know we've touched about it on before when you were on the show last time, but you've been working, you know, in the UFC for a very long time yourself and have kind of opened doors yourself for women to come through as, as broadcasters. And now we're seeing Laura Sanko having more time as a commentator and interviewer in the UFC as well. So women are becoming more prominent on the microphone now. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I never looked at it as oh, I want this job because I'm a woman or I should be in this role because I'm a woman. I just always felt like, well, if I earn it and I'm the best at it, then it should be mine. And it happened to be, that happened. And here I was a woman who, you know, was the first ever to be on a, a pay-per-view broadcast. And so, um, you know, I think that it's about the same attitude that Rhonda had. It's not self-serving. It's about what are we doing to set up, yes, of course, our own futures, but what are we doing to set up the future of the sport, the athletes, and those who want to do this role who come behind us? And I think, you know, when you lead with that, you're always going in the right direction. But, you know, sometimes we, we get caught up. There's event after event and, you know, there's so much for us to do where, of course, you struggle in live TV, like, oh, it wasn't perfect. And, I think we all just hold ourselves to that kind of standard, but it's definitely, you know, something I take really seriously is about not just being able to tell the athlete's stories, but setting the table correctly every single day, both in my personal and professional life to be somebody that represents the sport well and women broadcasters well as well. And not to mention, Megan, it's a good business decision. You know what I mean? Like, you know, how much of the population on planet Earth are female? You know, so the, the people that you're speaking to aren't only these, you know, male MMA fans. You're talking to, you know, the vast amount of the population. So it only makes sense to, to equal it, you know, diversity wise. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think women see themselves, you know, on all aspects of the broadcast or it might grab their attention to see a women's fight or, you know, a woman reporting or whatever it may be. But what's most powerful to me is when no one, really stops to think about the gender. Mm. You know, they don't think about like, oh, I'm watching this historic women's fight. They just think I'm watching this Zhang Weili versus Yoani and Jacek incredible fight and I know something special happening. You know, and, and I'm not watching this interview because a woman did it. I'm watching it because it's the best interview questions there are and they get the best out of the athlete. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely does. Look, and a big reason why you're on the show today and, and why we've showcased that story that you were a part of at UFC two eight five is because you, International Women's Day was this week, obviously, and it's just such a monumentous, you know, occasion where we get to, you know, put our women in the spotlight. And why not 
Let's celebrate it. You know, when International Women's Day does come around, Megan, how do you how do you approach it? Well, I think that was why the piece was so important to me. It was the 10 year anniversary. It's, um, you know, the International Women's Day month and week. So it's like, how can we how can we properly honor um, the women who help us do our jobs and give the world entertainment. And so, um, that was, that was what we had in mind this whole time was being able to release it then. And, you know, we have a lot of cool stuff that we do at work just to make sure, you know, in the lead up to, and the fight week of that we're, you know, honoring all the female athletes who have, you know, stepped through those, uh, doors inside the octagon. And so it's been, it's been really fun. Um, I hosted a, an episode of UFC connected, which is a show I do that was all based on, different women's stories and not your typical stories either. So it's, it's been really cool and fun. And I feel uh, fortunate to work at a place where um, I can talk about the amazing women that I work with and get the world to know them a little bit closer as well. And Fano, it's not only women making waves overseas. Our women right here in Aotearoa are making waves as well. Women's MMA is on the rise. And two women that can attest to that today are my guests here in studio. Well, one is coming to us from City Kickboxing, Jenna Fabian and Nyreen Crowley. Kia ora to you both. Kia ora. Kia ora. Look, we're celebrating International Women's Day. But, you know, for you both, you know, MMA has been a journey for many, many years and it's not every day that we get to sit down with our female fighters and get the inside scoop. And you both have been here before. You've actually shared your stories with me before, which has been awesome. So it's actually nice to catch up mm. and see how this has been ever evolving, especially in a gym like City Kickboxing, which is world renowned. Jenna, I'll start with you first. How has your journey been? How is it going? Kia ora, Rev. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, I've been home now. Got stuck in uh, uh, America for COVID period, and when the country went into lockdown, so I feel like I've just finally started to settle in and and sink my teeth back into um, my home gym and um, home. So um, a lot, though I haven't fought in the last seven months, a lot of things that kind of needed to um, I needed to just spend the time on. Um, has happened, you know, in the gym and outside as well. So nice one, Jen. And for you, Nyreen, I know you're forever training yourself. So how has it been? And especially, like I mentioned, at City Kickboxing, where you're surrounded by a lot of professional fighters. Oh, man. <laughs> Not only the best professional fighters, but the best female professional fighters. Like, to have Jenna always there um, supporting and uplifting a lot of the women in the gym as, like, a leader in a leader role. Um, but it's been awesome. Um, you've followed me from the very beginning. You've seen me go all around the world. And so it's been nice to settle myself in a gym that um, has really looked after both of us. And um, I, I love it. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that when the world looks at this gym, they they see the likes of, you know, Israel, there's Sonia, Dan Hooker and the likes. But there is a there is a contingent here of females that I feel, you know, low key hold it down. Yeah. <laughs> and you two are very much a part of that. Describe that and that that female camaraderie within the gym because it feels like over the years it's really grown, Jenna. It's amazing. Just as I I I think I sit back and look at that the most, like having so many women around now and in the sport and uh, yeah, in particular our gym. So um, the growth of New Zealand MMA, I think, is very very bright and very very. So, mm. Yeah, it's it's just to see and be a part of that now because i feel like for you both it's quite normal you know how you say women's mma is is growing mm. because once upon a time it wasn't so popular with females right yeah. all the recognition was definitely not there yeah for you nirene i know that it's been normal to train with men is yeah. there a difference when you are you know training and sparring with females as opposed to men oh yeah 100 percent. i think um you know it goes without saying that women bring a different energy they bring you know like this uh, uh, yeah, again, I don't know how to uh, properly describe it, but when you go into a gym and when you spend a long time moving through gyms where you are one of the only girls in the gym, you just get used to it. Mm. You get used to kind of having that very dominant um, masculine energy around. And, um, you know, like when I very, when I started, when I started my amateur career, I was one of, I was part of one of the only gyms that had quite a few girls. And so I was very lucky to have started like that. But I, again, when I, when we were, uh, when you're traveling around, it's very rare that you'll have um, 
uh, a lot of girls, mm. um, unless you go to the, the bigger gyms. And so, um, yeah, to come here and to have, like Jenna said, like girls across different weight divisions, different backgrounds. Uh, we've just had Janae Harding come over from, uh, or kind of come back home um, from traveling around the world. And so, yeah, just to have all of these wahine toa in our gym and to learn from each and every one of them, like, it's great. And, and um, it, it can only strengthen a gym to mm. have more women. I can say that, <laughs> I, I can say that without a doubt um, that, you know, as much uh, trouble as they give us sometimes, <laughs> um, they're lucky to have us in there. So. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's only beneficial for us. Absolutely. And look, I look at you two, you're, you're beautiful women, you know, <laughs> but with that comes, you know, there's a stigma, you know, and I'm, I'm curious to know, have you ever been asked, you know, why do you choose a sport like MMA? You know, there's a lot of comments that happen like that, you know, fighting is for, for guys yeah. um, because it hasn't been very popular with women. But have you ever had to deal, Jenna, with people, you know, questioning your decision to take up a sport, you know, like MMA? Things I've, I've had it, like I said, throughout my entire time I started it and things like that don't make me. I can only just um, lead by example and, um, you know, it encourage other women and give those give those confirmations and affirmations and and share that wisdom and knowledge that I've kind of had to go through firsthand and then you know just just pass that on is what I'd say that like the benefit of yeah where what's happened in my journey to date. Yeah, especially when you're a leader in the gym, right? Because I'm mm. guessing it's not just training and helping fighters prepare for fights, but when you've been in a gym long enough, you start taking classes mm. or you, you know, you offer up, you know, PT sessions and things like that. So what kind of, you know, what's the messaging that you have? Or do you even need to give out a message anymore to other female fighters? Um, I think that, um, you know, when I think, when I sit back and I, um, I think about, the growth of MMA um, and, and martial arts for women um, over the years. Like I think the perception of, of martial arts is changing rapidly it's a, with the obviously the popularity of how well New Zealand is competing on the world stage. Um, but I think it that, um, you know, with the per changed perception, I think we're, we're we're closing that gap or bridging the gap for women to enter into martial arts spaces. And I think, you know, the safer that you make that space or that transition, I think that you'll really start to see the uptake of more and more women um, professionally and, and nationally competing in MMA. I think that um, Jenna and I both know the benefits of the sport for women. Um, it's not, you know, this brutal um, sport where people try and take their, their head off. That's, that's obviously how it uh, people thought um, you know, sorry, what people thought MMA was, but um, it's beautiful to see people appreciate martial arts for what it is now, you know, and and for women in particular entering into these spaces and and using martial arts to um, grow their confidence about themselves, you know, really push themselves physically to see what they can do physically, mentally, emotionally, like this is what that sport offers. And um, it's uh, to see women come into the to the gym, like I think we all just kind of rally around and make sure that they're really looked after because, um, you know, personally, and I know Jenna has as, as well, probably experienced situations where we weren't looked after. And, you know, that um, more when I was starting, um, you know, it was so easy to see um, women just kind of get disrespected in spaces and, um, you know, not treated as equals. And I definitely feel like that is changing and that women are holding their own in these spaces now. And and both of us are, um, you know, always happy to help women kind of bridge that gap, like I said. Look, let's get back to yeah. the UFC ladies, because uh, we all know the UFC is the biggest MMA promotion in the world. Yeah. And, you know, when we think of MMA and we think about sitting down and watching fights, you know, UFC is is not the only one, but is the biggest. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm interested to know, um, you know, how closely you two both, you know, follow the UFC. Yeah. And if there's been any women within that promotion that has really m maybe inspired you or motivated you in your career. Mm. We'll start with you, Nairi. Um, Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're very closely kind of like uh, attached to UFC. So um, UFC Sundays is a thing, you know, we're always there watching, studying, um, supporting our teammates. But um, for me personally, um, some of my 
most favorite fighters, um, for the most part, of course they have amazing skills, but when you look at what they represent as women on a world stage, I think it's, um, you know, for me, it's so inspirational to see the likes of, you know, Rose Namahune step into spaces and talk about kindness on a world stage, or, you know, we've, you've got UFC mamas that are breastfeeding in the back and then they go and fight, you know, like these are phenomenal things that really represent women as a whole. Um, so when you look at um, Michelle Waterson, you know, who's got a young bab um, baba and other mom mamas that are in uh, the UFC, I think those are the women that really show strength and determination as women. Um, yeah, so I mean, other, other, other than that, uh, technically, I really like Bullet, uh, Valentina Bullet Shevchenko. Um, that was a phenomenal fight on the weekend. Uh, <laughs> I think that that was, a, yeah, I know. I think it was, I think it was just needed. You know, I yeah. think people, re it showcased um, how, how this, how unpredictable the sport is. And um, man, those two girls put on a show and, um, you know, like, it never used to be like that. Women never had that space. And so when you look at the likes of Ronda Rousey, who have paved the way for this to even be a thing, um, I think that she's done so much for women's MMA. So, yeah, yeah those are my probably top. Jenna might have something else to <laughs> Jenna, say. You got any? you got any faves that you've been watching over the years? Um, yeah, quite a few. There's, I mean, Joanna Jendoshek. Mm -hmm. And, um, I got, yeah, like, I'm fortunate enough to train with a lot of those girls um, that are in the UFC currently and, and at the past. So, I, I've, yeah, I've, I've been lucky enough to help a few girls now at their camps and different opponents um, when I've been based over here in the States. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just, I, yeah, there's definitely, like, some amazing fights, really, you know, like like Mary mentioned, excited uh, for Alexa Grasso and her win, and I'm a huge fan of it myself, but um, I just think, I just think the whole fight, the whole story as it unfolded, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you know, Alex will be the first um, Mexican uh, UFC champion. Woman. What does International Women's Day mean for you? Because I know you, you're not only, you know, this vessel sitting in front of me, but <laughs> you're a sister, you're a daughter, you're a cousin, Absolutely, you know what I mean? Yeah, so what does sure. that mean for you? Um, I think overall it's just, you know, having a dedicated time to really celebrate women, you know, for a long time we didn't have any kind of space to like stand and take up space. And so for me, um, you know, like you said, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, my sister in particular is doing phenomenal things over in the States. Mm -hmm. um, Please tell us a little bit more about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. She's just killing it over there. And like, you know, when you look at the women in New Zealand who are doing such great things on a world stage you know you've got Lydia Ko in golfing you've got Zoe Hobbs in the track and field you know but my sister in the professional wrestling space isn't something that you see every day and mm. so she's again paving another way for other people to come up behind her but International Women's Day is just, just to really celebrate and recognize um, female excellence because that's what we are we're excellent and I think um, you know we're now in an era where it's being celebrated.